In today's practical, we had a look at some very simple code, some embedded code running on a microchip PIC24 microcontroller. This line, port A equals X++, plus plus, writes the value of X to port A, which subsequently appears mapped on the port A pins on the chip, and then post increments X. We then naively create a delay using a for loop. So this line, ASM no op, is executed 32767 times. A no op is a single assembly instruction to do nothing for one instruction cycle, or in this case, two clock cycles. So is this a good way to do things? Well, there are some very major issues with this approach. And you'll see this approach used quite a lot. I would argue this is actually bad practice. And the reasons are that the for loop, as a delay, is fragile. Let me illustrate my point. If I put a breakpoint here, now I've got no optimization turned on. Now, optimization is something you get the compiler to do to make your code either faster, smaller, or even both. So what we're going to do, we're going to run and stop on a breakpoint, and we're going to look at what the compiler has done. We're going to look at the assembly language it has produced. So let's give ourselves a bit more space. So we go to Window, Debugging, Disassembly. And this is really useful because we can see a line of C and then the assembly language produced by the compiler. Now, I don't expect you to understand the assembly language, although you'd be surprised how easy it is to sort of work it out. Probably what's more surprising is this. This for loop produces this much assembly code. Now, not all of this is run each time round. Let's actually watch it now. So we're going to step line by line. So that's port A equals X plus plus. That's done. Now the first time through the loop clears the register W4 to 0, moves it to an address, and then it branches until eventually we reach the no op instruction. Back around the loop and then it follows this path every time. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instructions plus the no op once the loop is running. Okay, so that's with optimization turned off, and that's the code you get. And when you debug code, you typically do it without optimization turned on for reasons I'll explain. Okay, let's turn optimization on now. So right click. Properties, it's GCC, Optimizations, and I'm going to crank it up to three. Now, I'm using an evaluation version of this compiler. And as you'll see, when you turn on optimization, it's very efficient. Now, bear in mind that when we've done this loop, we've got this variable x, which holds the value to be written to the port. We've got a, a variable n, that's an index variable used for creating a for loop. And you can pretty much bet that without optimization, they are indeed stored in memory locations and are fetched and modified and sometimes rewritten. OK, let's contrast that now with optimization turned on, window, debugging, disassembly, and you'll see quite a difference. Well, port A equals X plus plus is four instructions, but most dramatic is the for loop. Now, I'm going to step through. We get a no op. We decrement a register. Branch of the register is not zero to 2A6. A no op decrement a register, branch if not 0 to 2A6, and so forth. So there are only two extra instructions per iteration. So yes, this is much more efficient. You can see that the 
index variable n is not actually a variable at all, it's used to register w4. That's not an unusual thing to happen. OK, so one thing we can say is that the delay in created by this loop depends not only on this value, but the optimization settings. And if you were to upgrade your compiler, you might find that the assembly language produced is different again. And so it would change under that circumstance. If I was to write code above and below and it saw a further optimization, it might impact on, the, on how many instructions it uses as well. So you have no real hard control over how long this delay will be for when you modify your code or your compiler settings. So it's very fragile. Before we stop, I want to point out one more thing. I want to talk about semantics. Semantically, I know this means do nothing for two clock cycles or one instruction cycle. So I do that. In other words, I waste two clock cycles 32767 times. That's what I know it means. But, and the compiler doesn't really make much many assumptions about this. It knows I'm trying to do something at least. But semantically, what we're saying is do nothing. Or if I do this, if I comment out the line, and naively I just write an empty loop, you would think, well, OK, that's just two instructions now that repeat 32767 times. Well, let's have a look. So we run, well, build and run, window, debugging, disassembly. You'll notice now that we write a value to port A, we increment it, we jump back. We write a value to port A, we increment it, we jump back. That's the while one loop. The for loop has completely gone. Why? Well, why not? Whoops. Semantically, this is do nothing 32767 times. This code has no impact on the state of the machine, so it literally does nothing. You've not asked it to do anything, so the, the optimizing compiler is well within its rights to simply remove it entirely. So if you debug it at C level, as we step the code, you might find it quite confusing. We step, we step, notice it doesn't move off that line. Port A equals X plus plus. It doesn't enter the for loop because the code's not there. And this is partly why we, de we debug with optimization turned off for these reasons. So we actually see every line of code executing. 